Welcome to our jigger operation, which is estimated to be a 38 to 42 day voyage. We will depart from Kaohsiung Harbor, pass through the South China Sea, the Strait of Malacca, the India Ocean, and pass the south tip of South Africa. As we continue to go west across the Atlantic Ocean, we will reach the fishing grounds for elex squids, the Falkland Islands exclusive economic zone and its northern high sea to catch elex squids. After locating our fishing ground, the operating procedures include 1. Deploy the parachute anchor from the bow after stopping the vessel. 2. Install jigging arms on both sides of the ship and adjust them to proper positions. 3. Raise the spank at the stern. 4. Turn on jigging machines. Set the hook depth, adjust fishing lines to the start position. 5. Install fishing bobs. Turn these fishing lights on before dark to attract fish and start the lower hooks for fishing. 6. Hooked squids will fall into a gully on the upper deck and be flushed into the catch handling area on the main deck. 7. The catch will be graded, packed, frozen, and stored. 8. Turn fishing lights off after dawn. After performing daily deck cleaning routine, either rest or retrieve the parachute anchor to change fishing location. 9. Transshipment will be performed when having a larger catch or when necessary. Do you know what kind of accidents we might encounter when performing these operations? Statistics show that causes of crew injury from 2015 to 2019 include trips, injuries by broken ropes, frostbites, falls, and overboard. If we pay extra attention, we can avoid these accidents. Before introducing to various procedures on jiggers, you should remember and follow the basic principles below. A. Before any operation, check to ensure the equipment is in good condition. This includes snatch blocks, ropes, screws, shackles, and supporting structures. They should be free of breaking and falling risks. B. Wear proper personal protective equipment according to different operation environments. C. Do not stand in the forced direction of machines, equipment, or ropes when working. For example, when retrieving the parachute anchor, there is a risk of being struck by broken ropes when standing in the rope retrieving zone or around a winch. Or, if one is standing under a snatch block when arranging the parachute anchor, there is a danger of being hit if any snatch block falls. D. Do not turn your back to a running machine at any time, so that you can detect any operation issues immediately. Next, we will introduce specific safety instructions and required personal protective equipment for works on deck, including deploying, retrieving a parachute anchor, installing, dismantling jigging arms, replacing fishing bulbs, fishing operation, catch handling, and transshipment. When retrieving, deploying the parachute anchor, personal protective equipment such as helmets, inflatable life jackets, gloves, safety boots, and safety harnesses should be worn. Irrelevant personnel should not stay around the winches. Standing or walking nearby moving ropes is also not allowed. 
The first step to deploy the parachute anchor: pull the parachute and ropes out from a winch. Arrange ropes and fold the parachute anchor according to deployment order. During this process, the winch operator should stand where he can see all personal actions in front of him clearly. The machine should not be operated too quickly. No one is allowed to stand over moving ropes to avoid tripping. Also, when encountered by strong wind, wet the umbrella part to decrease the chances of it being blown up. A blown parachute may cause personnel to fall overboard or be strangled by ropes. Step two: arrange the parachute anchor properly on the port side of the bow deck. Parachute shroud lines first, then the main rope. Step three: when the vessel obviously starts to back up, and the captain or the chief officer gives the order, let go, drop the parachute anchor in the order of buoy, trip line, parachute tail line, and parachute. Please note that personnel on the sites must wear safety harnesses. And attach them on railings or any fixed structure first. When throwing ropes, one should keep a safe distance from the ropes. Personnel should also keep a safe distance when dropping parachute shroud lines and the main rope. When operating the winch, and when the parachute anchor dropping board is moving. Step four. After dropping the parachute anchor at the starboard side, drop the parachute shroud line and main rope at the port side. Tie the main rope on the symmetrical grommets on both sides of the bow. During the whole process, a safe distance from the moving ropes should be kept, and the safety harness should always be worn and attached to a fixed vessel structure. When retrieving the parachute anchor while anchored, the first step is to move the vessel forward a little till the main rope sinks and loses tension. Stop immediately at that time. Winch the trip line back to collapse the parachute from its tail. Keep winching the trip line and buoy. Move the vessel backward and pull the parachute tail onto the boat simultaneously. Personnel at the bow should wear safety harnesses and keep a safe distance. Do not stand in the forced direction of winches or by tightened ropes. Do not touch winched ropes directly by hand. Active ropes should be used while standing on both sides to control the winched position of parachute shroud lines. Step two: When the parachute collapses. The captain must move the vessel backward and position the bow downwind to make sure the parachute anchor is not blown up by the wind. The main rope and parachute shroud lines should also be retrieved. A winch needs to be operated at the proper speed and not too fast. Personnel on both sides should use assistant ropes to control the direction of the main rope and parachute shroud lines to help retrieve them as evenly as possible into the winch shaft. This will decrease the chances of tangled, broken ropes or big difference in rope length. Step three: When changing to another working location, retrieve all ropes and fold the parachute anchor. Release ropes slowly from the winch. Make sure the process goes smoothly to avoid entanglement. At the same time, please note that the snatch blocks could fall. Please avoid its falling direction and range.
the basic protective equipment for installing and dismantling jigging arms is the same as for deploying and retrieving a parachute anchor. Safety harnesses are especially important during this operation as there will be climbing involved. At least four people should work together when installing a jigging arm to hold the ropes tight on the jigging arm. The other two hold the jigging arm itself. Step 1. Make sure all hanging rigs are in good condition and free of breaking risks. Step 2. After reaching the setup location, the personnel holding the jigging arm should attach their safety harnesses to railings or other fixed structure first. If enough people are present, Step 3 and Step 4 can be performed at the same time, which are fixing the screws at the base of the jigging arm and tying the leather ropes on both sides to neighboring jigging arms for better stability. Gloves must be warm when working. When climbing onto jigging arms is necessary, the personnel should attach their safety harnesses first. Step 5 tie jigging arm slings to fixed structures of the vessel. At least four people are needed to dismantle a jigging arm. The first step is to stop jigging machines. Step 2. Loosen jigging arm slings. Pull the jigging arms into a vertical position. Step 3. Loosen the screw nuts that were fixing the jigging arm. Then take out the screws. Gloves and safety harnesses must be warm when working. Climbing onto railings is necessary when replacing fishing bulbs. This is working at height. Personnel must wear protective equipment, including safety boots, gloves, helmets, inflatable life jackets, and safety harnesses. In addition, when replacing fishing bulbs, one person will be in charge of delivering the new bulb while another person will be changing it. Therefore, it takes at least two people to do this work. The first step to replacing fishing bulbs, climb near the bulb that needs to be replaced and attach the safety harness on a railing or fixed structure. Step 2. The person standing on the deck should hand over the new bulb to the person on the railing to replace it. Step 3. Screw the new bob on tightly to avoid risks of falling and injuring someone. When replacing underwater fishing bobs, the personnel can stand on a jigging arm and retrieve the cables. Underwater fishing bobs can be replaced after being put on deck. Basic equipment to wear when fishing include safety boots, gloves, helmets, anti-glare glasses, and light protective clothing. If the work requires climbing jigging arms, inflatable life jackets and safety harnesses must be worn. Once jigging arms have been installed and fishing lines are ready, a few preparation steps should be taken before starting to fish. A. Due to the high light intensity, do not stare directly at fishing lights once they are turned on. Anti-glare glasses must be worn. Wearing light protective clothing is recommended to prevent long exposure of strong light to the skin. 
B. After turning on jigging machines, do not stand behind drums in case fishing line breaks while the machines are still operating. One could get injured by the hooks or hit by the steel ladders. Please keep a safe distance from jigging machines and stay away from their force direction. C. Keep a safe distance from jigging machines when working or passing by. Safety boots and helmets must be worn when walking on deck to avoid injuries caused by tripping or being snagged by machines. D. If fishing lines tangle or break, stop the jigging machine safely. A group of two people should work together. One person climbs onto the jigging arm to handle the fishing lines, while the other person stay on deck to assist and keep alert. The person climbing the jigging arm must wear a safety harness first before doing anything else. E. When green water loading occurs due to tough weather, turn your back against it immediately. Do not run. Protect your head and hold onto any fixed structure nearby. If you have a safety harness on hand, Attach it to the vessel immediately to decrease the risk of being swept away by waves. Catch handling will be performed on the lower deck, so there is no risk of being struck by waves. However, the ship movement might occur. Basic equipment including safety boots, gloves, and helmets should be worn. Personal entering the freezing room or the fish hold must wear helmets, freezer gears, freezer boots, and freezer gloves. The first step in catch handling is grading and packing. Packed squids should be temporarily stored on both sides of the freezing room. They should be stacked tightly to avoid falling. If officers request squid tubes to be processed, it will usually be after grading. Pay attention when using knives. Do not injure others or yourself because of sheep movement or slippery floors. Step 2. Send packed squids to the freezing room. Before entering the freezing room, make sure the freezer gear to be warm is dry before putting it on to prevent frostbite. Also, clothing should be tucked in carefully to avoid it being caught in the conveyor. Step 3. Take out the frozen catch Remove freezing trays and pack. When removing freezing trays, take caution not to be hit by frozen squid blocks. Empty freezing trays need to be stacked neatly and not scattered everywhere. Step 4. Store bagged catch into the fish hold. Keep away from underneath the hatch when delivering frozen catch through the hatch. Check that the hatch ladder is stable enough. Do not rush when climbing the ladder to avoid falling due to ship movement. When the catch reaches a certain amount or other necessary circumstances occur, transshipment will be performed. Basic equipment to be worn include safety boots, gloves, and helmets. 
personnel entering the fish hold will need to wear additional freezer gears. The first step of transshipment is to check that hanging gears, like steel wires on both vessels, are in good condition and not at risk of breaking. Then hand the cargo net onto the hook. Step two: send the catch from the fish hold to the upper deck. With the conveyor, when moving the catch inside the fish hold, be careful not to fall or get injured by collapsing frozen squid blocks. Keep a safe distance from the conveyor while it is operating, as squid blocks could fall and cause injury. Also, limbs or clothes could get caught in the conveyor and cause injury. Step three. Place squid blocks into the cargo net. Step four: Make sure to transfer the full cargo net to the carrier safely. During transfer, personnel should avoid where the cargo net is picked up and dropped down. Severe injury or even death could occur if struck by fallen catch from the cargo net or the cargo net itself. When working on board, accidents could happen due to bad weather, ship movements, or unsafe operation. We cannot control the weather or make the ship as stable as on land. However, through safe operation practices and proper personal protective equipment, we will be able to lower the level of danger during different operations. On top of the above-mentioned instructions for each operation, we have also prepared a risk assessment form. The form lists possible hazards, consequences, and contingency measures for all different onboard situations, including boarding, leaving the vessel, general on-deck operation, fishing operations, parachute anchor handling, jigging arm use. Store, catch handling at processing deck, transshipment, accommodation, engine room, bridge, galley, and maintenance work. Before working, you can borrow this assessment form from the captain to create a safer working environment for you and your partners. To ensure better security on board is to ensure a safe return home.